Hey everyone, welcome to Nintendo Prime, and we're going to talk about uh, something that's been, I guess, in the news over the last couple of years, uh, and really, it's been going on for as far back as I can remember, and that is the debate over video games, uh, their place, obviously, in the world and the media, uh, and their place in terms of, what do they call violence in people, um, and actually, what, in particular, what we're going to talk about today is about the World Health Organization and how they classified uh, video game addiction as an actual mental disorder. Uh, and there is a difference between addictions and disorders. Uh, you can be an alcoholic, but it's not necessarily a mental disorder. Uh, a mental disorder could be something like bipolar disorder and stuff like that. Uh, but now video game addiction is actually being classified as something like bipolar, a.k.a. it's like a predetermined thing in our head. Uh, that, that that's a, actually a mental disease. And I always thought that this classification, or at least from what I can remember of it, was a little bit of a misunderstanding uh, because I honestly think that being addicted to video games is much more similar to being addicted to recreational drugs or being addicted to alcohol and stuff like that, uh, or really anything, gambling, whatever it happens to be. Whatever you're addicted to food, that's been a problem for me for, for a long time, uh, I, I don't really view it as like a mental disorder. I've never felt like it was a mental disorder. Uh, some of it's caused, you know, through bad parenting, parents not monitoring their kids and what they're consuming and what they're doing and not putting limits and restrictions until, uh, that kid grows up and can put limits and restrictions on themselves and realize that maybe they shouldn't just be playing video games for 12 plus hours a day, every single day of their life, uh, or whatever the case might be. And we, there, there's been lots of stories, I guess, out there, uh, in like China and Korea, you know, where people are actually like dying at internet cafes because they just don't leave uh, 24 hour internet cafes. And it, it's a little bit insane to me uh, when you think about uh, what video game addiction can do to some people. But again, uh, this is classifying video games as a potential to be addicted to. And I think as human beings, uh, we are addictive personality wise. Um, some people are more addictive personality wise than others. But I think in general, there's like a trait inside our brain that makes us addicted to certain things. And not all of those things are considered bad. Uh, I do think, as an example, if you find someone to fall in love with and um, you enjoy the feeling you have around them, how happy you are around them, that can be an addictive feeling. And you're going to want to be around that pe person more and more. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Now, there are times that it can be a bad thing and go too far and even become obsessive and all that. But again, different people, different strokes for different folks. So not all addictions are necessarily bad addictions, but I do think that we as human beings are just addicted to feeling good about whatever it happens to be. And I've always been a firm belief that uh, video games just are, the more of an addiction like alcohol, like you know, recreational drugs, stuff like that, where it's not really a mental disorder. It's just something that if you uh, don't have it in moderation, uh, or don't learn how to, some self-control, uh, you can have issue with. And I don't even think video game addiction is necessarily always bad. There's the extreme end where you're not taking care of yourself, not paying your bills, that kind of stuff. And that end is bad. Uh, but I also think there's a point, you know, like when I was a kid, I used to escape to video games. I used to escape to games like The Legend of Zelda to get away from things like my parents fighting and, and other stuff like that or, or stresses in life. I think uh, video games can be a great stress relief. They can be a great escape from reality. Even as an adult, I find myself at times uh, just enjoying a good game. Um, you know, whether it be <laughs> what I remember of Breath of the Wild or, or Mario Odyssey or something, or uh, going back to my childhood, you know, with Secret of Mana and stuff like that. It, it was really nice to just get into these worlds and engross yourself and just kind of forget about all the stress and all the stuff that's happening around you, uh, sometimes even in the same room when I was a kid. So uh, I, I don't think that video games are truly a mental disorder. Uh, I think there might be mental disorders associated with some people that get addicted to them, but I don't think that video games themselves are a disorder. But again, I don't, I'm not a researcher. I'm not a scientist. I'm not um, you know, a college or a university uh, that's able to prove or disprove uh, whether that, uh, that's the case. And I think it's a hard thing to prove or disprove anyways. It's kind of like how uh, there's been that big debate over, you know, do video games cause violence? And that's been going back to like, when I remember when I was a kid in the 90s, you know, with Grand Theft Auto and, and Doom and Duke Nukem and stuff where people are like, hey, 
hey, is this, uh, you know, are video games causing violence or causing school shootings? And um, it, it's been a really interesting debate because a lot of, of shooters do play video games, but not all of them do. So is the correlation really there? And then, you know, did the video game really cause it or would they have done it regardless of the video games or did it desensitize people? And there's evidence both directions and there's no definitive answer um, other than we just don't know because the human psyche is constantly changing and everyone is affected by things differently. And I think that's what makes such a, a thing like saying video games are a mental disorder or video game addictions a mental disorder such a concerning thing because everybody's different and it affects people differently the amount of serotonin your brains are getting or, or whatever the case may be is different well we have a study now that kind of supports us as gamers uh, of it being more of an addiction not necessarily a disorder um and uh, I found this on Nintendo Life, so let's, let's just give it a look here. It says, a new study says external issues are more likely to blame uh, for gaming addiction, not gaming itself. Uh, so and this is probably something I agree with, but I, I'm, I'm going to fully admit I have bias in this conversation because I am a gamer uh, and I enjoy video games. And I obviously don't like a negative light being painted around a medium that's been so important to my own mental health and stuff like that. Uh, so... Scrolling down there, uh, it says a, a new research study conducted by Oxford University has found insufficient evidence to suggest that gaming should be classified as a clinical disorder, which is what the World Health Organization has done. It notes gamers who are heavily affected by the problem are likely to be suffering from wider unrelated issues. And this is what I mean by you could get addicted to something or have all these things happen, but really uh, the ones that have an issue or have a problem probably have some other disorder or some other mental illness uh, that would have manifested in a different way if it, if it wasn't video games and it was some, something else. Um, the, the study comes as a response to the World Health Organization's decision to classify gaming addiction as a mental health condition. Um, so, Professor Andrew, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to totally butcher this name, uh, Andrew Probiliski, Director of Research at Oxford Internet Institution and co-author of the study, has shared the following. The World Health Organization and the American Psychiatric Association have called on researchers to investigate the clinical relevance of dysregulated video gaming among adolescents as previously studies have failed to examine the wider extent of what is going on in these young people's lives. This is something we seek to address with our new study. For the first time, we apply motivational theory and open science principles to investigate if psychological need satisfactions and frustrations in adolescents' daily lives are linked to dis regulated or obsessive gaming engagement. Our findings provided no evidence suggesting an unhealthy relationship with gaming accounts for substantial emotional, peer, and behavioral problems. Instead, variations in gaming experience are much more likely to be linked to whether adolescents' basic psychological needs for competence, autonomy, and social belonging are being met and if they are already experiencing wider functioning issues. In light of our findings, we do not believe sufficient evidence exists to warrant thinking about gaming as a clinical disorder in its own right. Uh, Dr. Neto, Weinstein Senior Lecturer of the University of Cardiff School of Psychology and co-author of the report says we urge healthcare professionals to look more closely at the underlying factors such as psychological satisfactions and everyday frustrations to understand why a minority of players feel like they must engage in gaming in an obsessive way. Now I think this is a really important study uh, because as, as you're looking at it here at least you know what, what we're able to see of it you know ex, you know you know little statements from it obviously you can uh, go to the sources down in the description and uh try to do more research on it if you can on what's been published uh i, I think what's really interesting in these findings is that we're starting to see that someone's finally trying to look at what's happening in these kids lives uh i, I think a lot of media especially uh the general media not video game media but like the general media the cnn's and, and fox news and all that stuff of the world uh don't understand video games at a fundamental level so what happens is these organizations put pressure on things like the World Health Organization to um, do something about what is a perceived problem that is just looked at from like the outside looking in, where you're kind of looking at, okay, this this person is obsessively playing video games. This person's also showing um, really negative behaviors uh, that seem to be associated with the fact that they're obsessively playing video games. And because of that, video games are the problem and thus is a mental disorder, uh, which is interesting since video games are a digital medium and we're not like coming out of the womb um <laughs> with with video game problems like we're not born with video game issues and the big thing with a lot of mental disorders is almost every single type of mental disorder um except for ptsd 
you know, that's, a, that's obviously post-traumatic stress disorder. That's a little different because that happens because of a trauma you actually experience. Uh, but pretty much every other mental illness or most other mental illnesses are something you can be born with. It, it, it's a biological issue in your brain, a chemical imbalance or what have you. Kind of similar things that lead to depression and all that um, that you can develop over time, but also you can be born with it. Uh, it. It's one of those situations to me that you can't really be born with a video game disorder uh, because it's a man-made thing, uh, and it's just an entertainment medium. Like, if we're going to start talking about how, um, you know, video games are a disorder, then why aren't we talking about how Netflix is a disorder? Like, people sit down and obsessively watch Netflix for, you know, marathons of four or five days when they're not working. Why are we not calling that a disorder? Um, they're not doing anything productive with their lives and during that time. They're just watching Netflix. Um, you know, binge-watching, especially since Netflix lets you watch, like, entire seasons at once. Of, of TV shows. And uh, I think the same is true in a lot of other situations. And we're just not properly examining those situations. And I think that's a uh, problem when you're taking this outside viewpoint and not actually looking at the person. You're focused so much on what's wrong now. Okay, they're playing a ton of video games, and have issues, and you can point at parenting and other things for that, but it looks bad. But then you're not considering what led to it, right? Because we're not coming out of the womb obsessively playing video games. Like, we don't pop out of the womb with a cell phone in our hand playing video games. We don't pop out of the womb with a Game Boy or, or whatever, a Switch, whatever. The, like, we don't, we're not born into this world with a problem with video games. So, something had to lead to that problem existing. And that's what I like about this study is it, it's taking a deeper look at what is actually leading to people, very few, by the way, obsessively playing video games to the point that it's actually a problem and uh, really hurting their mental mental health and their, you know, their, their physical health and what have you. And it turns out that it's not the video games that are the problem. It's that these people are turning to video games due to other problems, such as antisocial behavior, bullying at schools, uh, stuff like that. And, and it's interesting to take a wider scope view of this and realize the video games aren't really the problem. They're the, they're, they're, they're kind of like the, um, antidote that might be, not be the best antidote, right? It's, it, it's kind of, uh, why some some kids turn to drugs and you know weed or, or meth or whatever the, the case might be or why some kids turn to alcohol at really young ages when they shouldn't uh, maybe they see their parents that that, oh, that abuse it or something I don't know I mean there's a lot of things that lead kids you know peer pressure as well uh, to doing things that they shouldn't be doing and we don't call any of that a disorder um, but video games which we you might turn to or be pushed to for various reasons like i was when i was a kid just to escape reality uh people start to not understand it and they think it's such a childish thing uh especially you know i'm an adult you know 33 years old there's people still that uh you know even when i was in my 20s were were, were telling me god why don't you grow up and stop playing video games like um, you know, people probably say that about me as a YouTuber, hey, you're 33, what the heck are you doing? Grow up, stop playing video games. And uh, video games aren't this thing that are just for kids. It's like the biggest entertainment medium in the entire world. It's bigger than movies, it's bigger than music, and it's been that way for a little bit now, um, especially with the advent of, of phones um, and, and people gaming on phones. Then people don't even look down on people for gaming on phones, but then they might play games on phones longer than I play games on Switch or whatever. Like, it's, it's crazy to me uh, the way that the world looks down on video games. Uh, and I think it just comes from a fundamental misunderstanding. And I think that misunderstanding is going to change over time as the older generations that didn't really grow up with video games kind of phase out and the generations that did grow up with video games start to take over. And I think that's what's leading to some of these studies are um, – professors and, and different people that are now um, getting into the field and, hey, look, we don't really think video games are the cause of it, but if it is, let's find out. And they examine the whole person's life and you start to realize, oh, well, look, there's other things going on with this child uh, that maybe led to the video game addiction becoming what it was and that the video games themselves are not the disorder or not the cause of anything. You know, these, these all these school mass shootings, you know, where some of them happen to play video games, the video game didn't cause that kid to get into that mental state or, um, you know, even if it desensitized them a little bit to violence, it didn't cause them to want to mass shoot. There were other things, other factors going on that made them want to go to their school and kill a bunch of people and all that. And it, it's, it's something that's hard to talk about and it's hard, uh, for the media, I think in particular, because they're looking for a scapegoat. Everyone wants a scapegoat. They want something that's easy to point to and put blame on. I think we all want that in our lives. You know, if my relationship with my fiance all fell apart, you know, you're going to want to look at who's the blame. 
and usually when it falls apart you blame the other person and that's just a, a way for you to process things even though it's probably everyone's fault right if you're out, your kids don't turn out the way you want, you might beat yourself up, but it's also partially the teacher's fault, partially the mom's fault, and the grandparents. Anyone who had an influence on that child's life uh, uh, you know, bears a little bit of responsibility for how that child turned out. And I, I think this is just a situation where the media wants an easy scapegoat, and the World Health Organization just handed it to them without doing the proper research. Uh, just some little preliminary research. Where if you're trying to find a problem with video game obsession and um, mental you know, stability of a person who is, who is already obsessed with video games, you're going to find that connection because that's what you're looking for. But if you don't consider what led to that connection in the first place and you start just blaming the games, you lose touch with the reality of, of, of the mentality. Because again, we're not born into this world with this addiction. So it had to start somewhere. Something pushed them to that point to be obsessive with games. And a lot of it, as they're pointing out, it seems to be related to antisocial behavior, stuff like that, not, not fitting in, not belonging, uh, that kind of thing. And, uh, and video games, they feel accepted and all that. And uh, it goes a little too far. You know, I battle this with my children too, uh, especially uh, my, my daughter. I got to battle it with her too, you know, not, not letting her. Uh, she likes playing Roblox on her phone, but I like, or not her phone, she doesn't have a phone. She has a, an iPod Touch, and I have to limit how much she can play Roblox. So does her, her mom, too. got to limit the Roblox playtime because it's interacting with people online, and we don't want her to, um, who has depression and all that, to turn to um, random people on the Internet that we don't know uh, to deal with her problems. We'd rather her turn to us um, or her doctor or whatever, a therapist. Uh, and, and, that's, and, again, that's on parenting as well. And, thankfully, our kids are growing up with a parent in me that has all this experience of video games, has this internet savvy, this YouTube channel. My daughter, I don't know if you guys know this, she wants to grow up and be a YouTuber. I keep telling her it's a bad idea, but then me being a YouTuber, that probably doesn't help. Um, you know, whatever. She'll eventually come to me with advice and I'll probably, I'll either convince her to stop or I'll end up helping her. I have no idea um, which way I'm going to go with that yet. I hopefully I don't got to worry about that for many years. But uh, it's still just something to uh, put, on, put out there and think about. Um, again, I don't think that video games are a problem. I am biased, so obviously I'm going to agree with this study. Uh, but I'm actually just curious what you guys think about this uh, because this is a pretty serious topic. This is something that is happening now and can lead to bans on video games and restrictions and censorship. And I know apparently some people are upset with some sort of censorship with Nintendo with Tokyo Mirage Sessions, a Wii U game that's uh, being brought back to, to Switch. Uh, and it being like the North American version, which has some minor censorship in it. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I guess that's a debate for another time. But I think stuff like this all kind of ties in um, where if video games keep getting looked upon negatively in the general media, it's going to keep shaping people's perceptions of video games are bad. And I don't think video games are bad. Even with my kids and the issues they have at times with video games, I don't think that video games are bad. I think as a parent, it's on the parent to raise their kids right to enjoy video games in moderation. Um, and enjoy other aspects in life and just have video games be part of that life rather than the whole so i don't know that's just me i'm sure my parents probably feel like a failure because here i am talking about video games on the internet at 33 years old and they probably don't agree with that but uh it's okay love you mom and dad um i'm gonna make it someday at something i don't know what maybe it'll be this youtube thing maybe it'll be something else that i get a college degree for i have no idea but i'm gonna make it someday at whatever i'm doing um all that matters is my family's taken care of and uh I am thoroughly enjoying doing this thing on YouTube, and I hope to keep doing it uh, for as long as I can. This actually feels great. Um, this is my first video since my accident. I don't want to talk too much about the accident. Um, some of you guys know about it, some of you don't. Uh, all, you, all you need to know is that I am doing better. I am starting to remember most things. I'm still fuzzy on some TV shows and movies and, and stuff that's happened out in the world. Uh, but uh, I remember pretty much all my kids in their childhood now, and I remember a lot about this channel and hopefully a lot about editing videos. Um, because I have to edit this still. I don't know, except you already edited it by the time. I don't know, whatever. If you like this video, um, I guess like and subscribe. Uh, hopefully I got more videos coming for you. The last one I did uh, before my accident did pretty well. Almost 5,000 views on that one. So, and that was kind of cool rewatching that video and seeing what my thoughts were um, on Switch and all that. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Uh, hopefully I got more content coming for you the rest of this week. Catch you guys in the next video.